Hello and welcome to this week's AB Tutor Tips video. If you've already got all of your computers arranged in Active Directory Organisational Units, or OUs, having to set up the same arrangement again as AB Tutor Groups feels like unnecessary work. To save you having to do it all twice, AB Tutor supports automatic syncing between AD OUs and AB Tutor Groups. Not only does this mean that you can populate a group automatically without having to pick out the specific computers that belong in it, it also means that if you move a computer from one room to another, when you update your AD structure to show it this change, AB Tutor will automatically update as well. Before creating your sync job, ensure that you have created a group in AB Tutor to sync against. Right click on Shared Groups, select New Group and New Device Group. You will probably also wish to rename the group. Next, log in to your central server's web interface. This requires you to be an AB Tutor web administrator. On the server, select Server Settings and Sync. This page will show you any existing sync jobs on your server, including information about what they've done, but I'll cover this later in the video. We want to create a new sync job. For this example, I'm going to sync a group of devices from an OU, so I select Devices. User groups can be synced in much the same way, but I'll cover that in another video. The sync name allows you to give your sync job a friendly name to make it easy to identify in the list. This could be the room number, the group name, or anything else you prefer to use. We next set how often to run the sync job. If no changes need to be made, a sync job will run quite quickly, but generally there's no need to run them more often than once a day. Setting this to zero means that the sync job will never run automatically, but all sync jobs can be manually triggered if required. Now we add the name of the domain we are working with. If your domain uses SSL or SecureAuth, you can configure that here too. If I click on the Browse button, a tree view of my domain will be shown, allowing me to pick the OU I am interested in from the list and automatically filling in the full distinguished name of that OU. If you have a very large domain, it can take a long time for this list to populate. In this case, you can enter in a base DN to start the search from, preventing the server from having to scan the entire domain structure. This is optional, and for a domain that only covers a single site, shouldn't be necessary. The LDAP filter allows you to filter the devices found by the search, perhaps telling it to only include devices that are in a specific security group. You can also choose to recurse child OUs, which means that the scan won't just look in the OU you specified, but will also look inside any sub-OUs that are inside the specified one. Once all this has been configured, press Next. On this page, you can specify the group you created earlier to use as the target of the sync. If you forgot to create the group at the start, you can do it now and then click the blue Refresh button to update the list. Note that each group can only be associated with a single sync job, so if you select one that's assigned to another, it will be removed from the other sync. Next click Next again. The final step of creating a sync job allows you to automatically specify which users have access to this group. This will also be kept up to date by the sync job, allowing you to control who has access to groups by updating Active Directory. Once again, we can specify a domain OU and filter in exactly the same way we did earlier. Once you're happy, click Create to save your changes and create your new sync job. Back on the list, we can see our new sync job, along with information about when it runs. The actions allow you to make changes to its settings, to make an exact copy of it, perhaps to then adapt for a different group, to trigger it immediately and to delete it. If I run the job, you will see the information updates to show when it ran and the result, including how many items it found. This allows you to quickly check that it has picked up the correct number of devices and to be sure that everything is working as it should. If I look in the console, you will see that the devices have now been added to the group. Please be aware that a device sync will only add devices which have the AB client installed on them. However, if you install the client after creating the sync job and then run it again, it will find and add the new client. I hope that this video has been useful and has taught you everything you need about setting up sync device syncs. In the next videos, I shall cover syncing console users and running syncs against security groups instead of OUs. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.